Oh, Niles. You missed some top-of-the-line bar mitzvah. They flew the entire family in. Huh? From where? The ceiling. <laughs> Yeah, it was a giant sequined hot air balloon. It was like being in a Jewish Wizard of Oz. <laughs> oh, and B, the bar mitzvah gave me such great ideas for your confirmation party. And I'm sure they're fantastic. But after church, the whole family's coming back here for an elegant supper. You see, the arrangements have all been made. Quick, Niles, make the arrangements. <laughs> That's right, Maxwell. Less is more. When I was confirmed, we had a very simple ceremony. Mm, lit a few candles and danced around a dead cat. <laughs> Dad, come on. I've been studying with this priest for three years now. I want a bar mitzvah. Uh, come on, Mr. Sheffield. You know, he's the middle child. You saw the godfather. You don't want to have another Fredo Corleone on your hands. <laughs> He resents you for all those after-school activities that you make me schlep him to. Oh, no, that's me. <laughs> Nanny Fine, is this the cruise you and Val are going on? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, would you just look at that gorgeous hunk of beef over there by the pool? And, you know, the chef will carve it for you right there. <laughs> Don't you find it a little degrading to be a single woman on a cruise? I mean, trapped on a ship with all those marauding men, half naked, greased up with suntan oil. No way to escape. <laughs> Good night, Maxwell. Oh, Miss Fine, you're gonna have a wonderful time. You know, I remember my first transatlantic crossing. I booked the Royal Suite on the top deck. Oh, magnificent panoramic views. Oh, well, we've got the Jules Verne cabin. We're 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs> Okay, because my psychic told me that I was going to meet the man of my dreams on this cruise. A psychic, Miss Fine? Mm, yeah, she was fabulous. She said that he and I were going to dance on water. Then she got some kind of freak asthma attack, and it just ate up the rest of my three ninety-five a minute. <laughs> Miss Fine, you don't honestly think you're going to meet the love of your life and get married based only on what any stranger tells you over the telephone? Well, you got that right, mister. You know how many clueless quacks I had to call before I found one with that kind of vision? <laughs> she was working in a bridal shop in Flushing, Queens, till her boyfriend kicked her out in one of those crushing scenes. What was she to do? Where was she to go? She was out on her family. So over the bridge from Flushing to the Sheffield's door, she was there to sell makeup, but the father saw more. She had style, she had flair. She was there. That's how she became the nanny. Who would have guessed that the girl we described was just exactly what the doctor prescribed? Now the father finds her beguiling. Watch out, CC. And the kids are actually smiling. Such a thing. She's the lady in red when everybody else is wearing tan. The flashy girl from Flushing. I cannot believe Miss Fine is going on a cruise just because some psychic told her she had a date with destiny. I mean, when you pay someone, they only tell you what you want to hear. Absolutely, sir. <laughs> you are so clever. <laughs> and witty and handsome. <laughs> Shut up. You know, there is a chance she could run off. I mean, if she met someone and convinced herself it was fate, Oh, that would really tear the children up. Well, you know how attractive they find her. <laughs> I mean, nurturing and caring and all that. Why don't you tell her how they feel? Don't use any names, just convey their thoughts. Lost without you, never leave, <laughs> love you so. Well, are you completely mad? She'll think I'm talking about myself. Now, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> You are so clever yeah. and witty <laughs> and handsome. <laughs>